Hello and welcome to uh, a tactical pattern video. It's actually close. It's, it's kind of it's kind of a mating pattern in a way, but I think it's more of a tactical pattern because it doesn't always lead to mate. It's kind of a, a mechanism, but a very very cool very cool tactic. And I've known about it for a while because of this game that we have on the screen, played between Karl Oskar Ehus and George Shoris. Uh, was played in 1907 and did have some info on Carl Oscar. Let's see if I can find it. Here we are. Uh, he was apparently a Berlin champion in 1910. He shared third place at a strong Berlin tournament in 1926, where FM Bogolibov won, so it must have been a strong tournament. And he played uh, at a few chess Olympiads. This is probably, well, the tactic or, or game that he's best known for. And the spectacular, spectacular tactic. Before we look at it, we're going to look at some some other examples, and then we'll come back to this one. But I want to call this the Ahus flush out. And, well, we'll see why we call it the flush out. But you can probably guess it. It's because we kind of flush the king out. The reason I thought of this pattern was because of the game between uh, MVL and Caruana a few days ago at the, I think it's called the Super Bath Classic. Now, MVL with the white pieces, he won this game. Uh, but he had a decision here on move 25. His bishop is attacked. And he played the correct move. He played bishop to e1 and eventually won the game. But there are problems with other bishop moves, like bishop g3 or bishop f2. And especially with bishop to f2, then we have a very nice win. And this is kind of the A who is flush out. We can flush the king out to dangerous waters by playing queen to h3. And we are aided by the fact that the bishop is covering f1, so if the king goes back, we can play queen f1 mate. Actually, it's more resilient to play king h1. But then I think there shouldn't be much left here after bishop to f1. White is having problems defending against this. So after queen h3, if we take, there's going to be bishop f1. And once the king moves, black's pieces are set up in a nice way here. The pawn covering the rook which covers these squares. We can bring the knight in and finish the mating net, checkmate. So very often these tactics kind of, you know, lie under, under the surface and don't, you know, appear in the games. So this happens after bishop f2, and it's important that the bishop on f2 takes away a flight square from the king. Bishop g3, we can still play the, the this, this a who's flush out. If we take it, it's immediately mate. But the win is, is a little more complicated. If, if we go this way, we're probably going to take this and, and check. Win, win a lot of stuff. So I started to see if, if, if I could find some, some further examples of, of this tactic. And I did find some, including this one, where Maria Rakitskaya had the white pieces against Alexei Elishev. If I remember correctly, she was being outrated by close to 300 points. But she managed to upset her opponent by uh, applying the a who's flush out with a queen to h6. So basically the pattern, usually we are going to have this pawn formation, a fiel chair position. Uh, we need the bishop covering f8 because if, if the king goes back, we're going to mate on this square. So the king can't really go back, so it has to come out. So king here, well we can play queen takes h7 or, or, or queen f8, usually it would be queen f8. Uh, so if we take this, which is what happened in the game, we can play bishop f8, king must come out. In this case the knight is being attacked, but it can sort of keep the king running, it's flushed out, and it's actually mated here after e4. So a successful uh, a who's flush out. Same thing happened in this game. A little bit of a masterpiece, really. White played here. Rook takes e6. 
And if take, we're going to give this jack here probably. And it's going to end up in mate. So black plate, uh, queen d8. But this allowed a very nice uh, example of this, this, this pretty nice pattern with queen to h6. So again, because of the bishop, we are going to mate on f8 if we, the king goes back. And if we take, the king is flushed out. It's on its own. And white finished beautifully here with rook f5. Now this takes away the f5 square. So if the pawn takes bishop f3, well, the game finished, but king g5, and you see the finish, h4. Very nice. Now, back to the originator of this idea. Ehus. What did he come up with in this otherwise difficult position? Because black is up a pawn. He has pressure on this bishop here. It looks difficult. But he found the way. Can you find the way? He played the brilliant. You found it, right? Bishop a3. And this sets up the Ehus flush out. The rook is attacked, so if you don't want to lose material, you have to move it. But once you move it, you get hit with uh, with pain. Queen h6. And we know this now. Okay, the king has two squares. In both cases, we are going to mate on f8, aided by the bishop. And if the king comes out, as it did in the game, he's flushed out. And the tactics work out for us. h4 check and... King g4, bishop e2, checkmate. Same thing on h5. The bishop will mate. So a fun little example. Uh, maybe unlikely that this, this will come up in your game, but uh, I thought it was fun to share. And you know, add to this collection of tactical and checkmate patterns that we have on this channel. Do check out my playlists for uh, well, tactical patterns, strategical patterns, and checkmate patterns if you want to learn more about chess and improve. Yeah. Uh, your game. I think the absolute key to improving chess is to improve your pattern recognition. So it never hurts to uh, add to your arsenal as I like to call it. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.